damn, I love how that thumbnail turned out. <laughs> it's just something I just thought of on the fly. I was like, I should look pensive in that thumbnail. But anyway, hi, Andy here. And we are at vlog 299, baby. That means there's only one more vlog. Actually, well, this is the one more vlog. Next vlog's gonna be vlog 300. So if you guys have been following me for a little bit, um, I've been vlogging for quite a while. I've been doing almost daily vlogs. <laughs> live streams, whatever, from my car, um, and quickly approaching vlog 300, uh, it's going to be a retrospective on just my time on YouTube, my time vlogging, and we're going to answer some questions as well, so you only got a little bit more time before um, I go and answer your questions on, you know, about YouTube and things like that, so, uh, if you got anything you want to ask me, be sure to leave a little something, something in the comments down below in the boopity boops or uh, send me a message on Twitter, Instabook. <laughs> I said Instabook. Jesus, fuck, I'm getting old. Instagram or my Facebook. Uh, just look up the Andy Son. I'm not a hard man to find. So, in any event, there you go. Find me on Instabook. <laughs> Jesus. So, um,. Here we are once again at the Macadonado McDonald's here in Ohio, the state. In the, well, it's afternoon now, so it was going to be morning, but in any event. Uh, but yeah, today I want to talk about something that uh, Jared Pullen uh, recently put out, uh, talking about, there's like a post that he put out saying uh, you are not a failure um he posted a video on his uh on his youtube page as well as it was actually a clip from his uh his daily fro podcast which you should definitely check out it's something that i can't believe i've haven't checked out before <laughs> so i'm not subscribed so we're good there but uh in that he talks about how you know, if you're working towards something and you're not really seeing what you want to see out of it, you know, you're just kind of building it up that, you know, a lot of people might perceive you as being a failure because you're working on something and you're not really seeing anything come back to you in return. But the reality is, is that, you know, you're not a failure. It's just not your time. And I must have watched that video and, you know, listened to that short little podcast which he basically put up the entire clip on that video anyway i must have listened to that like 10 or 15 times yesterday it was just such a just such a wake-up call i guess just such a breath of fresh air and it's like it's something i really needed you know because it's something that i've been going through myself because of you know being on youtube for as long as i have you know I've, I've been on the youtube platform since 2006 which you know that's going on 13 years now you know fuck if i had a kid in 2006 which you know isn't all that unrealistic you know i would have been 20 going on 21 um you know they'd be going to what middle school now i think something like that so that's just crazy to think about in terms like that you know, but I've been on the YouTube platform since 2006. I've been making content on a fairly regular basis since 2008. So I've been making stuff for over a decade now. Consistently, anyway. Fairly. <laughs> Little lapses here and there, but you know, for the most part. Um, and it's just got me thinking because I've been on the platform for so long. I've seen so many changes over the years. You know, I've seen people come and go on the platform. You know, I've seen big creators rise up and just as quickly fall because they lose relevancy or they get into some kind of trouble and it, you know, kills their audience. And, uh, you know, kind of is what it is. And, uh, you know, it's just got me thinking, like, where do I see myself on the spectrum of success when it comes to my own journey on YouTube? And, you know, to be honest, it's like what Jared said, you know, I'm, I'm not a failure. I'm just, it's just not my time yet, but it's getting closer to being my time. And, you know, the, the awesome thing about having done this for so long is that when it is my time, 
I have a huge back catalog of stuff that people can look at, for better or worse. <laughs> it's not the best content all the time, but uh, it'll at least give you uh, some perspective on how long I've been on the YouTube platform, what kind of videos I used to do back in the day, and just, you know, give you some context on who I am as a person, how far I've come as a person. And that's one of the awesome things about doing YouTube for as long as I have is that I can go back and look at those old videos. And yes, a lot of them are, are pretty fucking cringy to look at. You know, my talking and speech is, is definitely different now versus then. And, you know, my editing, you know, I shouldn't really say that on these live streams because there, there is no editing here. But, uh, you know, my editing back then wasn't the best. Uh, I was just basically cutting out a lot of ums and ahs and you knows and stuff like that. And, you know, but most importantly, it was just to look back at where I was at that time, you know, go and look at some of the videos I made. Uh, when I was first starting out, you know, the first couple of vlogs I put out, you know, the first like three vlogs were completely unedited because I didn't have editing software at the time. And that's something I'm going to get into in vlog 300 as well, which gives more of a retrospect to my channel. But just to give you guys an idea of, you know, how far I've come so far is that, you know, my original channel at its peak was around 1500 closing in on 1600 subscribers before i left japan then it started going downhill and then you know i eventually migrated to what is now my editing channel and uh shifted everything over to that channel and then earlier this you know a couple months ago decided to make that strictly my editing channel and then have this as my uh, personal life channel. And, uh, you know, I, th I think I'm, you know, really satisfied with the, uh, with the changeover. You know, having everything being separate because, you know, having everything together for so long, it created a, uh, a clash of audiences, you know, because there'd be people that would tune in just to see my editing stuff or there'd be people that would tune in just to see you know what I was up to or just to see my Navy videos or just to see videos of me doing Japan stuff in Japan and you know when I was you know not able to provide that sort of content or providing different types of content they'd be like this is what I subscribed for and they unsubscribe or just not watch the videos or whatever and uh, you know I've held on to that notion of having just like a one-stop shop channel for so long, but really having separate channels for separate types of content, you know, I feel is definitely the best strategy, at least for now. And again, that could change with YouTube algorithms and things like that. But uh, at least from a creative standpoint, it's good to compartmentalize uh, the things that I want to do because I, I want to be more than just the Navy guy or the Japan vlogger guy or, you know, the video editor guy, you know, there's, there's other facets to me. And the beauty of a channel like this is that I can pretty much do whatever the fuck I want. You know, it's just, it's based on my own life and personal experience. So it's, uh, pretty much up for whatever you know it, it's not specifically about japan content it's not specifically about daily vlogs it's you know just a collection of my videos over the years as well as recent stuff too and it's easy to to make stuff for this channel that's why i've been posting more on this channel than all my other channels out a video without the pressure of you know taking the video back home putting it on the computer Cutting out all the ums, ahs, and you knows, and the just kind of roundabout ways, things that I talk about that uh, don't really go anywhere, to, so that way I can make a nice, finely cut, very concise type video. You know, I could just hang out here and talk with you guys, you know, about whatever. And, but getting back to the whole you're not a failure thing, um, I don't see myself as a failure, you know, I just see myself as working towards 
success, you know, not just on YouTube, but, you know, as a video editor as well. So, you know, I don't limit my success to metrics that I see on YouTube. You know, I, that's just false KPI, which is key performance indicator. Learned that one from watching Jade, Jade's videos. Um, Jade Dharma, damn it. Uh, if I, but anyway, <laughs> I wish I knew how to pronounce her name. If I see it, I can pronounce it, but uh, I can't pronounce it off the top of my head. So sorry, Jade. But uh, she put out a video recently saying, you know, talking about what it really takes to be a YouTuber in this day and age. And, you know, a lot of it's caffeinated beverages. So I got the basic bitch ass iced coffee. This is doubly caffeinated versus regular coffee. And it's fucking delicious. So <laughs> there's that. And, uh, you know, just getting out there and doing it, man. You don't have to worry about having the best gear or the best personality or whatever you know i always saw you know something like editing because i'm so into editing i, I always see it as kind of the great equalizer you know because you can have a really shitty camera or you can have a really awesome camera but none of that matters if you don't know how to edit because you know shitty camera making a shitty video is still going to be a shitty video but even if you have an awesome camera and you don't know how to edit, it's still going to be a shitty video. So, you know, editing is the great equalizer. So if you, you know, utilize your skills in video editing to make the most out of whatever situation you're in, whether you have that $3,000 plus, you know, Sony A7 III R whatever, big ass high-end Sony camera or if you just got a little fucking toy camera that you dug out of your kids uh, toy box for like 30 bucks um, gear I mean gear matters to a point but to get started you don't need the best of gear you know if you don't have the resources you should learn to be resourceful but eventually move forward towards better and better gear which is what I was saying in an earlier live stream, you know, and, you know, for me, um, you know, I didn't start making money at all off of YouTube in any capacity or even just video making in general until I was in my 30s, you know, and I did a lot of my YouTube stuff in my 20s, you know, I'm 32 now, so I'm not too into my 30s, but, uh, you know, 32 going on 33, you know, what you gonna do? And, you know, I didn't see my first check from YouTube until, like I said, I was in my 30s. And, you know, I didn't start making money off of doing, you know, freelance video editing. Like, I didn't start doing that until, you know, I was already out of the Navy and, you know, that just originally started off as helping a friend out, you know, helping out my friend Sam. You may know him online as Tikio Sam. Um, I was helping him out because his hard drive had crashed and he was getting his channel going again and wanted to put out daily content. And because his hard drive crashed, he wouldn't be able to do that anymore. So to help him while he was getting that all fixed up. And he really liked you know, not having to sit down and edit stuff, you know, gave him more time to make videos, which is, you know, what he likes to do more. He doesn't like to sit around and edit and stuff. You know, he'd rather be out there, you know, doing stuff. And uh, so he just kind of offloaded that to me, you know, I started making some money from it. And then he referred me to a couple other people who were looking for editors you know, they're my current client base now. And, you know, I've grown this little side hustle into basically a solid secondary income, you know, like because of the video editing stuff that I do, I don't have to work, you know, full time at a job. And I prefer not to actually, because, you know, editing does take time, you know, whether it's actually just putting the thing together, rendering, and granted, I do have a pretty awesome computer that can handle that for the most part. And, uh, 
you know, but ultimately it does take time and I'd much rather be putting together videos in my friggin' PJs than, you know, either working a fast food job or, you know, slaving away at a factory or something like that. You know, to me, it's just, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more rewarding putting together a project. You know, there's times where it ain't all that fun. I'll be honest with you, you know, being a video editor can suck sometimes because you got to get projects out at a certain, you know, time frame, whether that's something established by the client or just something that you yourself established, which is the case for, for me, like 90% of the time, you know, it's just, I want to get videos out to the client in, at, you know, a, a fast pace, you know, but I was going through some some problems with Premiere Pro on my main editing computer recently because, uh, you know, they did a whole big update and stuff and uh, that was, you know, <laughs> a whole nother issue in and of itself. And, you know, I couldn't access any of the old project files. Hey, what's up, James? But I couldn't access any of the old project files that I was working on. And, you know, I was having problems because the because Premiere wouldn't open up when I would open it up, so I had to, like, uninstall it. And then I tr tried to track down, like, an older version of Premiere that I could just, uh, you know, install. And that was having problems trying to trying to load up. And then it wasn't until yesterday, actually, that I was able to get it working again. And, uh, you know, when it finally started working, I was just so happy because I'd spent like literally the reason I didn't put out a video yesterday was because I literally spent all day at McDonald's on my fucking surface tablet, which is in that bag right there. Um, trying to put together, uh, some revisions for Brian from the ROM adventures channel, his, uh, his upcoming ramen school video. So, you know, sneak peek, <laughs> well, but you know, I literally, I, I got there like, nine o'clock in the morning thereabouts and I didn't leave until like three in the afternoon just trying to put together that video because the tablet you know which don't get me wrong I love the surface tablet it's great for a lot of basic tasks it's a perfect school laptop because it's lightweight it's small enough to fit on a desk so you can take notes or you know surf reddit <laughs> um but you can take notes, you can open up like Office and things like that, and you know, just do like really basic stuff. You know, you can watch some videos and whatnot. Um, I mean, you can do like really basic stuff, but it's not really meant for high end productivity stuff like video editing. <laughs> it can do it, like, you can do like really simple video edits, you know, or just stuff that doesn't require a lot of processing power. You know, it can do it, but you know, you really got to work with it because it has to be like the only program on and you gotta you gotta be patient with it and you know sometimes even as patient as i am my own patience runs out so what time we got okay but uh yeah um so i spent like pretty much all day yesterday <laughs> working on that video i finally got it done and I just went home to render it because I didn't want to stay at McDonald's for another hour or two waiting for the damn thing to render, hoping the tablet wouldn't just burst into flames because it was taking so much processing power from that laptop to render the video. And, you know, took it home, had it render, and then that's when I got Premiere working on my main machine again. So I'll get another project while that was rendering because I was just so fucking happy that I got Premiere to work on my main computer again that I was just like, I got to put out another video <laughs> for Brian. Uh, so that one's going to be coming out soon as well. So yeah, it's just, it's weird because I've been going through a lot of, a lot of shit recently. You know, like I said earlier this week, you know, things haven't been going so well at home. Um, that's starting to kind of blow over a little bit. Um, you know, fingers crossed anyway. Uh, but, you know, I think that putting together videos, not just for myself, but for other people, is the one thing that's keeping me sane in this world. 
Um, it's the one thing I can find some joy and some happiness in. Um, and not just making my clients happy, but also making their audience happy as well. You know, because I go and I read the comments in the videos that I put together once they are up on YouTube. And, you know, none of, not a lot of them, if any, say like, man, great editing. You know, who's that Andy Sand guy? I want to hire him. But, you know, so I don't really pay attention to like that kind of direct comments but it's mostly just like oh man great video or wow that's an awesome shot or something like that you know because I do have to put together that those sorts of things and uh, yeah friggin it's an awesome feeling seeing the positive response from those videos you know and to see like the progression that you know the channels that I work with how far they've come from an editing perspective and just, you know, from an audience perspective, um, seeing how much I've, you know, been able to help them out, you know, it just, it gives me the, the warm and fuzzies on the inside, knowing that my work is helping other people, not just clients, but also their audience, you know, if anything, help them escape from the dredges of their lives for even just a couple minutes. Or just, you know, see a part of the world that they never would get the chance to see because of whatever their circumstance is. So, that gives me the, the warm and fuzzies. And it also gives me my own little, little, you know, Japan fix. Because, you know, I'm such a junkie for that shit. <laughs> and I love, love Japan. That's why I want to come back. Um, and, you know, as long as I'm able to work on videos whether it's for myself or for other people, um, to me, I'm not a failure, you know, 32, what you gonna do? And, you know, a lot of what I've done, you know, to actually make money, any semblance of money, you know, doing what I love to do, that didn't get started until my 30s, you know, I spent pretty much the entirety of my 20s, if you think about it, because I started on YouTube when I was 20, and you know started making content regularly around 21 22 ish you know but i spent pretty much all of my 20s making stuff on youtube which you know looking back on it wasn't really all that good but i wouldn't have gotten to this level had i not made those videos <laughs> so again giving context for why those videos are being re-uploaded and stuff and whatever, you know. If anything, it's to appease the YouTube algorithm saying, hey, he uploads daily. <laughs> so, you know, and it gives you guys something to watch in case I miss a live stream or whatever. But in any event, I gotta get going. I gotta get some food. I gotta do stuff today. So, with that said, guys, vlog 300 up. So be sure to leave some questions down below in the booby de boops or in your social media of choice, you know, YouTube, well, I guess technically YouTube, but, you know, Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook page, that sort of thing. Um, just let me know what you want to A in the Q&A. So, with that said, this is the Andy Sign. Sign for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. See you at vlog 300. <laughs> Bye.